All right. Hey, thanks everybody for showing up on a nice night, July 16th, 2019. We're here for a building committee meeting. I'll turn it over to Peter, Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. For those of you who haven't met our new recording secretary, this is Sarah Giacomone. She's going to be uh, reporting on the evening and the school board meeting. So. Hi, Sarah. Hi, Sarah. So um, first thing, uh, we've got minutes in our packet. Um, I've had a chance to look through them. I didn't see anything new. If, if uh, somebody wants to make a motion. I'll move to make a motion that we approve the uh, minutes of June 18th, 2019 meeting. Is there a second? Second. I'll second. Any uh, changes, deletions, deletions? In no dissent. All good? All those in favor say aye. 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 Unanimous. Um, Greg, an update. Hey. Fantastic. Well, uh, as everybody can see, uh, a lot of actions happening at both schools. Um, the uh, I'll start with the elementary. Uh, since our last meeting, of course, school has closed, which has now allowed the entire front parking lot out uh, at the elementary school to be removed to allow for our new stormwater measures uh, to be in place. And that is moving ahead uh, uh, at a pretty good clip. And they're actually planning on paving uh, at least binder coat uh, the uh, end of this month to get that in. And they won't do final paving or the finished coat until closer to school near the end of August so that it doesn't get anything damaged to equipment running across it. Interior wise, uh, mo uh, pretty much everything's right on schedule if not ahead of schedule. Uh, I guess if you would walk in there right now, you'd probably go, how's this all gonna get done? It's, it's all moving well. It does look like a, a bit of a organized disaster site and the high school probably isn't even worse to look at, but uh, moving forward uh, quite well and Finishes are getting done, and uh, as we're going to have tomorrow another area released that we'll actually start prepping for the school year. So 
that's going well. Administrative offices are all being framed out and uh, sheetrock and wiring and all of that are going in. At the high school, uh, probably uh, everybody's uh, hopefully had a chance to go by. You can see the steel work for the new entry is all being uh, installed uh, and a pretty good clip. Uh, the demo at the element at the excuse me at the high school is is uh, a much larger affair. Actually, they had to bring in two contractors. It is a it is a big part of it. And as I said, elementary, if you go walk into the high school, it it, it looks uh, intimidating with the amount of work that has to still be done. But it will it will happen. Um, we have several areas of new additions that are already completed and released to allow for us to start uh, doing some of our things that we need to do, tie in our intercom systems and things like that. So those, those wings are all uh, done and clean and ready to go. Um, right now they're, they're on schedule, they're on schedule with a demo and uh, working to uh, get that all moved forward. The library, or I should say, excuse me, the media center is all framed out and looks, it looks excellent. Um, and so people remember that actually media center is gonna kind of uh, dual, dual function as part of this until about November, uh, as it's still going to be used as a cafeteria and a media center at the same time. So uh, those pieces are coming together. Uh, so we're, we're, we're right on target based on uh, what we, we felt it was going to be and, and uh, moving forward. So great job. In terms of demolition at the high school, um, as I understand it from attending the last or the next to the last trailer meeting, that um, everything's essentially been uncovered. And, and, and in other words, we've, we've gotten a chance to look behind the walls, if you will, and above the ceilings for the most part. Yeah, that's true. Uh, we, you know, because the big demo piece to it, which was this summer, is, is that center core of the building and, and those areas. So a lot of that's been opened up. Uh, you know, like anything, when you do find things behind the walls that you don't necessarily know, some of the essential asbestos, which got removed, and a few uh, uh, areas where we're going to do some re-support work and things like that. But yeah, it's all been opened up, so we do have that, that vision of what's there. Okay. And, and so, needless to say, nothing shocking so far in terms of... Not any, nothing well, any well different than any of the major demolition project that you do find in the school, opening up hidden things, you will find stuff. Yeah. It, there was an issue, and I don't know if it was necessary, it was, it was in the ceiling in the cafetorium with a I don't know, a cracked um, member or whatever. And that's one of the supporting structures that are being addressed. Um, when the ceiling was removed from the uh, from that area, we, it was noted that several of the original beams to those areas from the um, 60s were actually cracking, and they're going to end up being sistered. Probably and it, 50s. Uh, let's see, which, that one is, I think the 50, that may be the 54 edition. There's, a, it's there's so many editions, it's a... It's hard to keep track of them all, but um, yeah, that was uncovered as part of it, and that's being addressed as as we go forward. Um, so yeah, those things were found, and, and again, that's not unusual when you do open up an old building like that. Nothing major, though. So nothing that I'm going to report at this point um, of any major, and nothing in in forward that I can report at this point that I would say to worry about. Okay. Any other questions? I just have. Um, looking forward into September, um, the elementary school is supposed to be close to complete in September? Elementary is supposed to be substantially complete at the end of the summer. So when the kids come back to school, the job will be substantially complete. And, and what I mean by that is there may be touch up painting, some punchless items, uh, small things like that that have to be done as any construction project winds down. Uh, but yes, that is, that is uh, what is to happen. So I have a question about ribbon, ribbon cutting ceremonies. Are we going to do any celebratory? <laughs> I, would, I would say to Mike, uh, um, I think that got changed. But I, I yeah, we, we talked about that at the um, uh, last school board meeting last Thursday. We thought it's prudent to wait till the whole project is done okay. and then do one ceremony. And that way we could say we're done, done. You know, we're not waiting for something outstanding and, and, uh, and uh, probably, you know, sometime, you know, next the end of the next school year or into this you know into the summer whenever whenever is appropriate we did talk uh, at the last school board meeting also about at the end of august um, providing the opportunity for folks to go in and see it um, 
not in a ceremonial way, but grandparents should walk through it because it will be at the end of August completed in terms of a walkthrough. There may be some things done. So we haven't quite figured out how to orchestrate that, uh, but we want to show off what we've done. Um, it's been a lot of inconvenience and a lot of uh, hustle and bustle, but uh, I think it's going to knock people's socks off at the end of It'd be good for people to see it. We oh, yeah. just wanted to add something else to your schedule for late <laughs> August. <laughs> <laughs> I get to reiterate again on behalf of the principals that I think we should consider doing that after school is up and running um, late September, maybe even on a Saturday afternoon. I, I'll add a Saturday afternoon or something to your <laughs> schedule. Um, but again, unless this project is substantially different than any other I've been involved in, it's going to be to the wire to get that school, those schools open on time. Um, and, and I have every confidence that we're gonna do it, but um, that I would recommend that a deference to what it's gonna be like for these administrators and teachers trying to open up that we wait until, you know, after the second week of school or something to that effect. Might, might make sense and then maybe on a Saturday or at night or something. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Good, Any, anything else? I, I, just in terms of the same question for the high school, and. I, I know that um, there's parts of <laughs> there's pieces and parts of the high school, some which will be up and running and online, and some will not. Um, I just I don't know if you can give us just a quick and dirty overview. And one of the places that I've been hearing questions from the community is about the cafeteria and where the students will eat, because um, I know that the cafeteria that's a big project and, and that's not slated to be done for months. Um, so I so we're targeting, for instance, the cafeteria, which is also the the cafeteria area and everything like that, is targeted for a. Uh, the end of October or November 1st opening. So uh, Chris and his staff have worked out so that um, the media, the new media center, which is the old cafeteria, will still have, uh, I think, one, one lunch, is what you said? Yeah, there's one block of lunches one, that, one block. that will serve a good portion of lunches, so we'll put the flooring down. The, the final flooring is supposed to be carpet, so we're not going to put that down until veteran stairs gives us ample space between that probably two other breakout spaces in the newer wings where we'll be able to manage staff. We also have courtyard area, which was not available to us before, which might be nice for upperclassmen. And the volume of kids uh, early in the year, juniors and seniors with privileges, we may open that a little bit earlier than we typically do, maybe a week or two earlier um, for kids who are able to and are mobile enough to leave for lunch. So I, I'm confident we can um, manage that piece. Um, that's one of the bigger pieces. I think probably moreover, the last phase of the upstairs classrooms will be down about nine classrooms total, um, but we'll still, in terms of total number of class spaces, still have more, um, even without those nine, um, than we do currently. So Can you explain that again? I'm sorry. So you'll be down nine classrooms. Those last nine just sort of come online. Uh, it's between nine and 11 at the second floor. Of the so second nine from the completed project. Correct. But Correct. you'll still be up considering be, what we've had yeah, for the last the total week. number will still be more. So that's more of a piece of just making sure that this room is, you know, this class is being held in this room at this time because nobody, nobody here is worried about those rooms. So there'll still be some classroom sharing going on with the There classroom. will uh, absolutely be and, and probably for most of the year. And can I ask about the junior high wing? Will that be online? Because it seems like, I mean, just from the outside, it looks like a lot has gone on in that space. So when you, when it, it, that's the hard part when I was talking about when you, if you actually look at what's going on right now, um, it, it looks like, gee, how's this gonna open? But there are part, for instance, that whole main entry, the, the, the administrative wing, all of that, which just looks destroyed right now because it's in demo, will be all off and operational. So we'll still have flow of students coming in that area. Those places will be finished and they're moving forward. If you look in there, you'll notice all of that administrative wing, all the way down that side hallway, which is that sixth grade area, is all being framed up and, and flooring's being scheduled for all of those areas and sheetrock and wiring. So those will all be happening and those will all be opening as part of this. Um, there's some areas in, in the center that won't be open. Um, just because of the timing when we have to get them done, for instance, the, the, the cafetorium area and things like that. But you, those areas right now that we're talking about will be open, the new wing will be open, uh, the west wing and the east, so we'll be able to have students going into brand new classrooms. So it's kind of the, I say center core, but that 
kind of shafted area will be uh, still under construction during that, that period. So middle school yeah. will be ready to move into yeah. phase six, seven, two, eight. All high school sciences will move into training phases. Uh, the ground floor classrooms, uh, but for a few of our high school uh, math and high school social studies will be the two most affected. Other than that, we feel pretty confident that the riders will continue to be on and ahead of schedule, that we're, we're in good shape. There'll, there'll be some sharing, like we said, mm -hmm. And so the, this is what, if I remember just going back three years ago when we talked about this phase, <laughs> like this is when we actually have construction in the building at the same time students are in the building. Um, and so do we have kind of quiet spaces for testing and those types of things to, to, to lack that? I don't know if those are set up, but uh, just in terms of trying to diminish the, the impact on student learning in essential time. I know probably sounded a lot like I've started an X-Men fan club in the past. <laughs> but in, in all seriousness, working with Dan um, directly, uh, he's, he's fantastic. He understands the scope of the school so well. It's sometimes difficult to say there are quiet spaces. We can identify quiet times. So for instance, I, last year I provided Dan, uh, you know, out, Dan and Greg, out throughout the year, times when we'd be doing standardized testing, times when certain things were taking place and they tried to, we worked with each other to be as respectful identified spaces is more difficult. It's a little easier to find times where we can ask for quiet. Um, and, and that's worked out well. It hasn't always been perfect. There have been some, you know, unexpected, we're, we're chiseling uh, brick out and things like that. And those things will, will come. But the communication's been great. Dan's on site. He's very easy to speak with. And I can say, hey, we've got this going on. You've probably heard from kids. We've, there have been times we've moved classrooms. Um, and, um, and Mia probably could speak to it better than anybody. There are still some classrooms that uh, climate control is, you know, a question. Our kids and teachers have been phenomenal. They, they work through it. Um, we communicate well. It's not always perfect, but we try to get on it as quickly as we can, and we try to um, we try to identify ahead of time the things that might be an issue. And it's it's pretty easy with with the group that we have on site. But it's not perfect. I'm mm -hmm. going to sit here and tell you that it is. Yeah, it's it's difficult to do a, this type of project with an operating school. I mean, it it, it is the reality of it, and um, I guess be nice to say we're going to build this building over here and everybody's going to move over and then you don't have that but um, that's not the type of project that we're doing and so there are those disruptions and you know uh, Chris has called me and said hey by the way uh, can you help this is noisy and we will you know deal with it accordingly and, and Dan's been great you know to help maneuver as we need be to those those needs for the school um, but it is an active construction site while an active school at the same time and so there are challenges that and uh, Chris hit the the big one, which is the climate control. I mean, we're still dealing and running an old heating plant, not the heating plant, excuse me, the heating system, the piping, the, the control of all of that. None of that's been installed yet. Um, so, yeah, this last winter was quite an interesting time because we, you know, yeah, we had new boilers, but we didn't have new controls and new piping and new unit heaters and so on and so forth. So we're still trying to keep an old system running with a new boiler and pumps pumping into it. So. It certainly creates challenges. I think Mia would probably, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but when it's really warm outside, I feel the state's pretty warm, but if it's really cold outside, I feel the state's somewhat cool. So we're, we're working through some of that. When will um, the heating unit be online to with the boiler? Well, the, bo the, the new boiler's been up and running, and we, it, if you may remember, we, we kind of had to do some uh, dancing <laughs> last winter to try to make that all happen. You won't have the 100% completed system until the building is 100% because we just can't bring everything online. So um, you're talking March-ish when we'll start seeing the full system up and operation under the new controls and everything like that is, is where it's targeted. There'll be areas that are new and operational. Obviously, the, any of the new additions are running on new, con new controls and, and new valves and new piping and all of that. Uh, so we'll have much better controls over those areas and some of the older areas that we'll still be having to operate through this process. But by the end of uh, March and the beginning of April, we should be in really good shape for all of that. And Greg, not to get too far into the weeds, but one of the examples of that is, so the way the system used to run is to keep domestic hot water, we had to keep one joint, two joints, which meant that one part of the building would have stayed really warm, even in June. Now that's been rectified, so our domestic hot water 
doing some of those little things that I've learned along the way. Um, but it's really interesting. It's a challenge. <laughs> Thank you. The um, one positive aspect is too is the the parking and the drop off will all be on the high school side at the beginning of the year, um, so we won't have the crossing of the street anymore. Um, at least by students, staff will park over there. Um, so. so it will loop around the back of the building Correct. like it used to, and there's the new portico and entrance on the right hand side facing on the street the side, street where it used to, to be. other questions on the progress? Um, could John or uh, Greg, can you just give us a quick update on the uh, drainage issue on Kids and Different Schools? Sure. So I, I, I think that was brought up. Uh, just to uh, kind of remind people, um, and I think it's important to, to realize this, uh, one of the challenges that not necessarily the schools face with, but what we have out in that area is there's two catch basins that enter out onto 152 that are existing, um, that are actually a uh, more of a, yeah, it's the elementary school, sorry about that, <laughs> that are uh, sometimes referred to as French drains. And basically the hole dug in the ground with a, a uh, grade on top. The problem is they're not piped to anything. We don't own those. They're not part of our scope of our project. They're not owned by the town of Newmarket and or the schools in Newmarket. They are owned by the Department of Transportation. Um, and so they are not within the scope of our project at all. Um, I, I'm trying to work with some entities to try to see if we can rectify that somehow. So the problem though with those is they fill up, you know, when, you, when you're coming out of the, out of the elementary school onto, onto the main street and they freeze in the winter, um, they just never, and, and it, it's not a matter of cleaning them, they just, it's, it's just a bad design for that situation. So, the, yeah, <laughs> and, and, they, and the biggest issue is is that they're not part of the school's system or the town system, they're, they're, they're part of the DOT, and since that's a Route 152, we don't, we don't handle the road, we don't take care of the basins other than we do vector them out. Uh, they are all part of the DOT. So what I'm hoping to do is we do have a project for new water lines going down there, and I, I, I can't promise anything at this point because I, I don't know, but I'm just on the infancy side of it is seeing if there's anything we may be able to do during that process when they put the new water lines in to see maybe we can get the DOT to help us out here or work with us on trying to actually pipe those catch basins so they're actually positive drains. Um, but again, that's just just started working on that and, and I'm not, I, I can't give any promises that the DOT will be there to work with us on it or there's a solution or anything can or cannot happen. I'm just saying that's where we're starting. And it's an issue because, um, you know, we're doing all this nice drainage work on the property itself, which should handle the property, but then, you know, you, you drive out of a lot and you're running over, you know, a, a, you know ice, and water and all that stuff, so it, it you know it kind of a, it, it affects us in that way, but it's not ours to. And we get, we've had a couple questions recently from folks in the community about whether those would be fixed as part of this, and that you know Greg's provided the explanation he just he just said. John, John, did you want to say? That's why I'm trying to work with it right now to see if I can get some kind of resolution to it. Um, 
I, I, like I said, the, the biggest challenge to this is it's, it's not our fixture, it's not our, our uh, catch basins, and it's not our road. Um, it's, it's the state's road, so um, it's not a, I'd like to say it's clean and s straightforward, but it, it does have some challenges to getting to that point. Is there any consideration for, uh, like, if that's a, specifically in the winter, if that's a real hazard for pedestrians, as much as it is with the lights going about cars going in and out and out on the ice, can, I've seen it where parents will have to walk out into the road to get around those puddles. I wonder if that may be a real issue for them this year than maybe the year. I, I can't answer for them, obviously, but those are com all conversations that we're, we're trying to have. Do they have any liability over it? I, I, I'm not an attorney, <laughs> but I would like what's that? Unlikely. Yeah. Sovereign immunity. Yeah. So, it, yeah, it, it, our attorney. <laughs> yeah. I'm being careful, Mike. It, no, it's know. a fair point because it, it happened uh, to Chris's point the, in terms of the walking around. It was happening a little bit at the high school too because it, there was some, because of the temporary condition of the of the you know right near right near Eckman's trailer where that entrance was. It just was puddling up and. Yeah. People do that. They go around puddles. They don't walk through the middle of them. Your it's more fun, though. When your whole life is screwed, it's safer to go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. I think people are, are naturally going to be disappointed when they see them until you guys do it. And I think that's why it's important to get it out. But we're, we're working to get the OT, but it's not going to work. Anything else on progress? Greg, the financials, you have some on the back of the packet. Yes, uh, so, well, uh, do you want to go through the report or do we go through the financials? I guess the monthly report, then financials, right? Yeah. So sure. the monthly report is, as we always do, um, uh, we talk about uh, milestones that we hit. Uh, sorry. Uh, so, and we always try to uh, uh, look at when were they scheduled and when did they actually uh, be uh, became complete. So, um, and these, keep in mind, this is as the end of June report. This is not July. So some of these are actually already completed. For instance, the granite at the elementary, a lot of granite's already gone in at the elementary. So since the end of June, a lot of that's changed. Um, the stormwater measures at the elementary, well, they're in the ground now and, and buried and compacted. So those are kind of things. So we're actually, if you notice, that shows a, August completion, we're actually going to have a July completion. So in those particular projects, we're actually ahead of schedule and I think they're going really well. Um, so we, those are the kind of things that are really positive. We do have some things that we always have to concern ourselves. Uh, uh, unsuitable materials, although th that's starting to diminish down from where we were obviously a year ago, um, especially at the high school since we really don't have any ex any excavating left really per se there. We have a little bit left at the elementary, still do, but um, I think we've run into the majority of what we're going to run into at this point. Um, uh, so we always have a few issues. We, you know, I, you'll notice I say the elementary school uh, front windows administrative area have some rusting out and, and you know, those are more operational things. So we're gonna be kind of looking at those. Um, Asbestos is always going to be an issue at the high school. As we open up more things, we find more and more asbestos. It's, it's just the nature of what we're doing. Um, uh, year to date, right, or not year to date. I shouldn't say year to date. Excuse me. To date of June 30th, we have uh, $756,612 in total change orders um, that have been uh, authorized. And, and these include cha change estimates as well as any credits that we may have been issued. Um, looking ahead, uh, main power cutover, uh, we actually got that up into the new cutover. The, the buildings actually as of uh, July was, uh, the old service was shut down and uh, that's done well. Um, the uh, interior finishes for the, the new east and west wings at the high school are actually done. So those are actually completed. Uh, finishes for the special education area at the elementary school are done and actually can be moved into. Uh, although construction in the hallway kind of <laughs> negates some of that. Um, 
so, and the renovations to both administrative areas are knee deep and, and uh, um, you know, right on target. So if we feel pretty good about that. Um, the original bonded amount hasn't changed nor where we projected where we are. Um, obviously the GMP, the base GMP is still the same. What does adjust to those GMPs is obviously change orders that we have. Um, I have included and uh, as part of this as, as our, our change logs, our approved change logs, so it gives you an idea where we, what we're doing for changes, what the costs are, where the credits are. So if you actually take a look at that, it will tell you where these numbers actually are, uh, are derived. Um, and one of the things that you'll notice, I did put an additional handout uh, that I wanted to talk about a bit. Uh, so one of the things that we have some cost controls that are say controls or that are part of us are owner costs and and some of those are the ff &E, which uh, stands for uh, furniture fixtures and, and equipment and uh, our school contingency which is where most of our change orders are actually uh, paid through as well as some owner soft costs and those uh, soft costs are things like the engineering the architectural fees um, uh, some of the uh, uh, other professional services that we, we have um, that are all covered in there. And, and one of the thought processes in working with our, uh, our chair and our vice chair of this committee was to try to kind of give everybody a better idea of where those particular <coughs> line items, because those are the ones that we have uh, more direct control of or more um, uh, things that come in and out of that, or actually come more in than out. Um, so, uh, to give you an idea, we broke it, I broke it down to expenditures based on fiscal years. So if you actually look under the F, 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 F and E, can't speak tonight for some reason, um, you'll notice that we didn't buy any uh, F, F and E in, in 2017, but we did in 18 and uh, 19. There's no expenditures in 20 because, well, that was July 1st and we haven't had any expenditures to apply to this as of June 30th, which is when this is based on. So. <laughs> next month would have some, some uh, uh, mounts. You'll notice that I show that there's a f only, uh, that there's 4% remaining in FF&E. &E. Um, below that you will see remaining FF&E ex expenditures and these are anticipated expenditures that we will be, we will have to cover and that's some landscaping costs, telephone intercom, access systems, uh, so, uh, lighting systems for the, the cafetorium, uh, and that those items come up to uh, $338,975. Uh, when you add that to where we're currently sitting on our FF&E, you'll notice that we're actually showing a negative $287,036.64 or a negative 23% in that particular light item. So that means that line item is over, ex will be over well overexpended. Um, I, 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 I hope this committee doesn't find that that is a big surprise in that particular light item for the fact that we have been talking about some of our concerns that, for instance, in, in that uh, uh, cost structures are, we didn't really carry full intercom systems. We didn't carry full cost for uh, sound systems and lighting systems and all of those that have to come out of those budgets. So um, that is what put that into that area. If I go over to the next line, which is our school contingencies, you'll see what we have expended in each fiscal year. I do note that, you'll note that there's a 2020 3300, and the only reason that I added that particular one in is because we actually approved it like the day before, so I have a known cost, so I just added it in there so that everybody would see. Um, as you can see, our balance on that currently is $348,000 or 25% of that. We are um, carrying a contingency potentials of $267,000, uh, 100, $102,000 for unsuitables, one hundred thirty dollars for undefined change orders, and $35,000 for additional asbestos that we didn't know about, which does leave that particular account based on these projections. Uh, approximately 81,000 on the positive or 6% uh, to, the, to the positive side of that particular line item. Uh, 
The other area is owner soft costs. Again, these are engineering, architectural, testing fees, uh, uh, professional services that we do have to pay for. Um, and at, at to date right now, we're at 396,005, excuse me, 586 um, in the positive side of that. We are projecting some expenditures still to come out of those. Those are going to be additional engineering fees, architectural costs for things. For instance, the, the redesign of the SRO's office, or I shouldn't say redesigns, it's really an additional uh, need at the elementary school because we didn't have an SRO when the design was done, so we've had to have some architectural and some engineering uh, costs that uh, uh, may be coming for those added redrawing of those areas. Mm -hmm. So we did carry those, and that came to 164,400, which does leave a 232,186,000 dollars uh, on the positive, or seven percent of that total. Um, which, if you kind of look at it, the positives on the two of them kind of are higher, uh, have more positive than we have negatives on the FF uh, on the FF and E. So that's that's a good position to be in, not not saying we have negative across the board, but um, it was thought that this kind of gives you a better idea of what we're looking at in those particular line items as we go forward. Um, and so uh, we will be including this particular item as we go forward in, in our meetings uh, ahead. Um, Ekman also has a contingency line included in their uh, project with us, and so we do track that uh, with them. They so that between, and these are again, totalized for schools. So the uh, 1322148 so far expended uh, as of the date of this was 542692 or 41% of that. At the end of the project, any remaining contingencies in that line item with our construction manager are returned to us. Mm -hmm. So I want to make sure that uh, everybody knows that. So if we get through this and this and that contingency line has three hundred thousand dollars still left in it, Ekman would be uh, would be crediting us that three hundred thousand um, dollars. Again, we still have a ways to go on the project, uh, but that's how that works. So it's not um, money that it's theirs to use as part of this it's for those things that couldn't be found, need to be adjusted, need to be dealt with. Um, Ekman um, and the, uh, the two project managers I deal with, which is Brian Baluti and, and Alex Flanders, are very good at keeping up with that. We have all of the records of what goes into those lines as well as the cost. And, and so uh, that $542,000, you see there, we know exactly what that is and, and uh, have those records kept for that. So um, none of it is... Uh, I know that some people will say, well, if they have the control over that, they can just go spend, and they, they don't. They're actually very mindful of those particular funds. So I, I want it well documented that uh, that they, they do a great job of making sure that they've covered everything up front and those contingencies are really just what they are. They're for contingencies that could not be uh, predetermined. So um, I hope this kind of gives uh, a better handle on it. The rest of the, the financials are really just construction numbers, and those are numbers that we already have with Ekman in, a, in our GMP in there. So those are not really that fluctuating as they come. So I, I, I hope that kind of clarifies some of the stuff and gets uh, a better understanding. I know that the reports that I give out with all of the financials and everything can be kind of um, uh, daunting when you look at them because there's just a lot to it. Um, I will say, and I have to take uh, the blame for this, if you actually look at your uh, recap where it says total school contingency on a soft cost in FF&E from the original report, there's actually a formula error. And uh, I have to thank both Al and Mike because they, they caught it, and I didn't, which I should have caught, but I didn't. If you look under total FF&E, and it says total cost as of, and then projected FF&E costs, and then you'll see a balance of six hundred eighty thousand dollars. Well, when the, the, somehow I changed my formula and ended up adding the actual money back into what we've already expended in, of that particular line item, and it actually skewed that number. 
that number is not 680,000 or anywhere near that because if you actually do the math, you'll realize that it's considerably less. So 40, 42.4. Yeah. So I apologize for that. And, and uh, it, it wasn't that way in the prior report, but this report somehow I did a mathematical error. And um, Al and Mike both questioned me today uh, in one of our meetings saying something's just not adding up right. And so we got looking at it again this afternoon, and I'm like, uh, yeah, hold on. And went right to my Excel spreadsheet and found out that when you take a negative to a negative, it doesn't work out very well. So uh, we did address that in the future reports, and, and actually has been addressed in the system right now. So and we also talked with the Greg about any of the remaining assets and the expenses that you were uh, had any concern about, and one of those was the furniture allowance. Correct. Uh, for I can't remember whether it was a junior senior. I mean, it was a junior senior. Correct. You feel as though that could be off by. It could be thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollars off. Um, one of the, 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 we just have right now that fifty thousand that you see as a plate uh, as that holder in there, will not be there um, uh, next month. That will be gone and fully expended. We have right now in front of the school board or for the next school board meeting, a approximately seventy five thousand uh, dollars to be approved for furnishing furniture furnishings for the high school. That is not the entire facility. Um, that is what we need to get going to where we're at. Um, there will be additional furnishings that will be needed to be purchased. Um, I need to sit down with Chris and, we need, and, and his staff and look at what that looks like and where we're going to be at and what those numbers are. So I do foresee that we could be spending more money uh, in that particular area. <coughs> The elementary, I think we're in, we may have a few small things here and there, but I do have a little bit of positive money still left in that account. Um, uh, but I think we've hit the majority of uh, what the elementary is going to need, and that uh, furnishings have already been ordered and are uh, hopefully will be delivered in the next three or four weeks. So, Greg, would I be correct in saying that the furniture allowance is saying we could, in fact, be upside down? It, it is the potential. We're going to keep working the numbers and hopefully bring things into better pricing as we go forward. Um, uh, Al, can you make that statement again? If, uh, in fact, if, if in fact the furniture comes in at seventy or eighty thousand dollars, which you're, is you're talking that placeholder. Spot? No, the uh, fifty thousand. The furniture allowance for the junior senior fifty is already eaten up. And there could be another 60 or 70. Again, I, I, I hesitate to see what the number is until I sit down with Chris and kind of map out what we still have remaining for furniture but to my buy. Point, but my point is to, that you would then, with that number added in there, the balance for this project would be upside down. It would be too prohibitive to select it. Not by much, but so we're still. And we are, we'll continue to work for our, you know, our landscaping bids and stuff like that. We'll continue to work those to make them, you know, hopefully come in better than, than what we uh, have for our initial cost analysis of, on that. So we will try our, you know, we're going to keep working at it and try to uh, massage this as it keeps going. So quick question. Um, I, I remember at different times, like, for example, the um, rust in the elementary school window. There were times when Ms. Meredith mentioned that there is money in the regular operating budget um, to do some just building maintenance. Um, and then also I remember looking at the um, access and camera system. We also received a grant, didn't we, from Homeland Security. Are there any places that we can mitigate some of those FFE expenditures with either operating budget or things like that grant? So the, the grant that you're speaking of, um, there are requirements that we have to come up with a certain dollar amount for that grant. So we are required to have the matching like, funds. Yes, matching funds. So there are some expenditures that are, uh, we still have to cover that is reflected in those numbers. Um, and some of the work that has gone on was not in the scope of the job to begin with. So for instance, the protective window film, which just got awarded, which is paid for out of um, those infrastructure funds that we got through Homeland, 
uh, are not even in this. It's not in that. So those funds come from operating or uh, the differences. So our price, we get, we just got the price in, in the process of awarding us $12,800. We're responsible for 20% of that particular number. And that's just one item. So we do have some of those that are coming out of operations also on top of this. Um, <coughs> so the, the windows you speak of, yes, I believe that that is an operating fund. We did tap the operating fund um, for the sewer project, if, you, if uh, people remember that. And we had a pretty sizable change order uh, due to ledge that was also in those, uh, had to be taken out of those operating funds, which we have done. So we have been utilizing operating funds when we can um, that are basically look at it, is it in the scope of the original construction job or not? So the window, rotted out windows and rusty windows are not in the original scope, so we'll be using that. We look at certain flooring areas and things like that that really should happen to make this a total package, but those are coming out of operational funds. So we are trying some of those areas where we can, um, especially where there would be a, uh, say, a change order. I know that there's a uh, change order that I'm gonna be seeing shortly for some additional flooring um, and we're, we'll pull that, we'll be targeting that out of operations, not out of the construction job. So um, we do that as we can and as, it, as it's approved by the school board to do that. Um, again, the sewer line is probably one of the greatest examples that we were able to use uh, that. Um, and, and if you can remember in uh, way back when, when we did the original um, FF&E costs and, and moving costs and things like that, that's where we're starting to get some of those heavy expenses and that's where we're, we're struggling to get some of that. So we're trying to pull as much in. Our moving expenses are already over over $35,000. Um, that was the original line item of $5,000. So that's where you're starting to see some of our challenges and our expenditures that are not necessarily properly funded in this. So we're trying every angle we can and trying to come up with different ways to do it. So. We're, we're getting there. I, I'm, I don't have any panic hat on or anything like that at this point. Um, we just need to stay on top of it and keep uh, working it to be able to bring this into the proper levels. And I, I, I fully feel we'll be able to do that. And also the, um, the sewer system, there's a culvert replacement that we're doing that are coming out of operating costs. So there's also the crunch on the operating mm -hmm. side of the budget. So um, we're looking forward to some some good reporting soon on the operating budget. We do know it's getting skinny. That's my report, sir. So just relatedly, um, as our new superintendent, Susan Gibbons, is starting Thursday, although she's really started like a month ago because she's been working, doing a lot of transition work. When she has her feet on the ground, you know, maybe sometime in the early fall, um, I suspect that at least initially Greg and Al and I will sit down with her uh, and the business person to discuss um, whether and if we want to do a warrant article for the bond interest. Um, you may recall that uh, you need a warrant article in order to access the bond interest, which is on page two. It's currently at a little over half a million dollars. Um, and I think we'll probably have a better idea a couple of months hence about better where things stand and uh, you know, project won't be done yet, um, but we, we can look at that point. You know, I'm not feeling an, a, a need necessarily to do that right now, but it, you know, potentially depending on, on what the, uh, the pleasure of the board is, it, it, you know, it could be if, you know, it could be dedicated to, to um, stuff, um, you know, that, that comes up that, that's underfunded, you know, FF&E, or we have some ad alternates yet that we haven't considered, you know, the courtyard uh, the bleachers for the elementary school, um, I, I'm, I'm missing a whole bunch of them, um, but those are there too. We'll just have to, we'll have to look at where we stand in the project at that point and whether it makes any sense. Um, you know, you know, something you can do, um, uh, I guess theoretically, is to do a warrant article should it get approved. It doesn't mean you have to use the money, but it's there, you know, and you could always, you can always just return it, you know, uh, that could be done too, but um, we just don't know at this point whether that makes sense. But the timing is, if, you know, we're going to have to, if we want to do a warrant article, that's got to be out, like, by the end of the year, you know. So um, we're going to have to, you know, that's, that's going to come right up. Um, but we have that in mind. 
Any other comments on the on Greg's presentation, the numbers, questions? Okay. All right. Um, and I don't know as we have on here, our next meeting date will be, let's see here. August. Wow. August. August 20th? 20th. Yep. Um, at 5 p.m., same time. And if there's nothing else, uh, let's adjourn. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.